From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Montana's 68th session comes to a close. We'll detail a strange final day in Helena. We'll look back in a couple months and I think we'll really be proud of what we accomplished here. Plus, we're looking into a potential grizzly bear poaching case right outside Yellowstone National Park. It's devastating for us in the animal world to see something like this. And we'll hear from a beloved Billings principal moving on after this school year. Good morning and welcome to Montana this morning on this Wednesday, May 3rd. I'm Augusta McDonald. Election results are in. Voters making their voices heard about the future of area schools. Let's begin in Laurel, where residents are saying yes to a new elementary school. This $57 million bond passed with 55% of the vote. With the money, the school will tear down Graff Elementary and replace it with a new third through fifth grade school. Improvements are on the way for West Elementary and the district will sell the current administration building. Laurel Voters are, however, voting down a $31 million bond for the high school. The district asked for the money to pay for career technical education additions and athletic expansion. Here in Billings, board member races for School District 2 take center stage. Brooke Wagner will serve as the high school trustee for District B. She earns 69% of the vote, defeating Brandy Seibel. Tanya Ludwig retains her seat in District 1, holding off Ken Ard by earning 60% of the vote there. And now on to District 2, where Jenna Hafer has defeated Star Emery. Andrea Nemitz looks like she'll hold on as well in a very close race for the District 6 seat, only defeating Roger Santala by a little over 100 votes. For more school election results, head to KTVQ.com. We've tracked the races for Huntley, Lockwood, and Shepherd, and we have the outcomes um, published on our website, other schools as well. School board elections across the country are becoming increasingly more political. Outgoing Billings Superintendent Greg Upham says the change really ratcheted up during the pandemic. Then masking was the division of issue, and now it's book bans, critical race theory, and sex ed. Enrollment in education programs is dropping around the country. The climate around schools is driving people away from careers and education. Upham says teachers have a full enough plate as is without wading into politics. We're worried about school shootings and school violence. I mean the pressures that are put on us from that and then all the externals that that were caught in this crossfire of political issues is wearing us out and, and it's frustrating. Upham tells us he's confident Billings educators get up every single day trying to do the best job they can for their students. Upham isn't the only prominent Billings Schools employee calling it quits. Senior High's principal is making a career change after more than two decades on the job. Q2's Alina Howder has more. A year after being named the top principal in Montana, Jeff Burns says it's time to step away, which means big changes are coming here to Billings Senior High. Oh, sweet. Good job. There's a reason why Jeff Earn was named Montana Principal of the Year in 2022. If anyone's leading this, you two been doing all the work all year anyway, right? <laughs> huh? He is super, super passionate about what he does, and he truly cares about all the students here at Senior High. But after 25 years at Senior High, seven of them as principal, he's ready for a career change. And a pretty drastic one at that. What's your plans for the summer? I got my real estate license, so I'm going to be a full-time real estate agent working with uh, Realty Billings. But Earn is used to big changes. Earn started at senior high in 1998 teaching math. He's also coached football and softball. Just gonna be uh, working real estate. But has adapted from one role to the next because of the one thing that stayed constant, his love for his students. Seeing the growth when they come here as freshmen, you know, as they graduate as seniors and, and just seeing them ready to be productive members of this, you know, of the community. And they're excited for this new chapter in his career. He's got that kind of casual um, approach to life, but at the same time is really intelligent and um, charismatic. So I think he'll do quite well. Qualities incoming principal Shelley Strofe hopes to emulate. I have had really good examples and a real good model and, and a mentor. She spent the last 16 years as Earn's assistant principal. I have big shoes to fill, for sure. And um, Jeff and I have been partners for 16 years, and so I've learned a lot from him. A man who leaves a legacy at senior high. Once a Bronx, always a Bronx. So I truly will, uh, I truly will miss this place. So the last thing is just go Bronx. In Billings, Alina <laughs> Howder, MTN News. Thanks, Alina, for that. And uh, the fun's over, everyone. The computer's fixed. So. Oh, let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs>
It was yeah. a pretty quiet morning before Ooh. Miller starts running around. I was my, like, okay, it's fun my now. My blood pressure just went up 300 <laughs> points, I tell you right. My goodness, holy cow. All right, let's see if the computer will play along. Before we get into the forecast, let's take a step back in time. Now, yesterday we didn't quite hit 80 at the airport, but we came close. We are still a good 17 degrees above the norm. Today we have a chance to go 20 plus degrees above average. In fact, for the next couple of days, overnight lows slightly warmer than average yesterday morning. Top gust of 22 miles an hour yesterday. Still could be breezy today. It's been a dry start to the month. We're in the hole for the month and in uh, the year, but hang in there. We're now into an unsettled weather pattern. I think as we get into Friday, our best chance of seeing maybe some heavy rainfall coming into play. Some areas could see some rain today, seeing a little bit of rain off to our southwest right now. Temperatures mild this morning in the 40s and 50s, 70s and 80s today. Um, we're going to see some sunshine, then we're going to see some clouds moving in. You can see some spots, maybe even Billings later this evening, a chance we could see some rain or maybe even a rumble of thunder or two. But Friday, 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 our best chance to see some of that sh uh, shower activity and maybe not severe, but some strong thunderstorms could roll through. What does that mean? I'll let you know with the uh, main forecast coming up. And we were kind of cut off a little bit from talking about this earlier, but it is bike and roll to school day. Yes. So what does should, that mean? What does that mean exactly? Sure. And should folks plan on picking up those bikes like in the back of the truck? On uh, the well, yeah, today? I mean, they should be able to go this morning and okay. uh, maybe heading home later today a bit iffy. But yeah, uh, kids riding their bikes to school or roll. They got skateboards. They got roller skates. Uh, a good day to do that. Hopefully the rain will hold off, uh, especially later on this afternoon. It's a good day, a good deal that it was today yes. because if it got to Friday, yeah, well, that wasn't, that wasn't going to happen. So anyway, be careful if you're going to be outside today. But again, those thunderstorms could be kind of strong as we get into Friday. We'll break that down for you. Come up. Okay, Miller, thank you so much. You got it. And signy die lawmakers are returning home with Montana's 68th legislative session now officially over. This morning, MTN's Jonathan Ambarian tells us how we got here. The final hours of the Montana legislative session didn't go quite as most people were expecting, but both chambers did get their work done, including the biggest step, finalizing the state's main budget bill, House Bill 2. Around 3.20 p.m., Senate Minority Leader Pat Flowers, a Democrat from Belgrade, made a motion to adjourn sine die. Republican Senate President Jason Ellsworth of Hamilton expressed concern that the House hadn't yet finished its work on the state budget. But sine die is a non-debatable motion, and when it was allowed to move forward, it ended up passing 26 to 24. And we felt at this point um, that there wasn't any more work that could be done that would be to the advantage of Montanans, and it was time to leave here. Senate Majority Leader Steve Fitzpatrick, a Republican from Great Falls, said he was initially disappointed in the adjournment, but he concluded they would be able to resolve anything that needed to be fixed. This little motion aside, it's, it's, been, it's been a great session for Republicans, for the people of Montana. I, I, you know, we'll look back in a couple months and I think we'll really be proud of what we accomplished here. The Senate's decision left the House needing to adjust. Things have changed slightly in the last couple hours. The House needed to reconsider its actions on a series of significant bills since they could no longer work out differences with the Senate in a conference committee. What we need to do is the bills that are within the House um, control, uh, we'd have to keep them um, as they came over from the Senate. So that is the situation the House finds itself in tonight. House Bill 2 was the last bill debated. The House accepted the Senate's amendments with relatively little discussion. I think it does good work overall for this state. It will uh, serve us well. After final votes on more than 50 bills the House still had under consideration, and speeches from termed out legislators and the House Minority Leader, Majority Leader, and Speaker, the motion to adjourn sine die came from Representative Lola Sheldon Galloway at 9.14 p.m. 89 representatives have voted aye, seven have voted no. Motion is passed and the 68th legislative session is adjourned. The legislature used 87 out of their 90 allotted working days this session. May 2nd is the latest in the calendar year that a session has wrapped up since at least 1999. In Helena, Jonathan Ambarian, MTN News. Thank you, Jonathan. And Missoula Representative Zoe Zephyr was again absent from the House floor on the last day of the session. A Lewis and Clark County District Court judge ruled against Zephyr and the ACLU yesterday, saying it was outside his authority to overrule lawmakers' decisions to ban her. He cited the importance of preserving the Constitution's separation of powers between the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. Zephyr and the ACLU filed a lawsuit asking for her to be reinstated, arguing the punishment violated the First Amendment rights of her and her constituents.
And now we go on to Wyoming, where wildlife officials are investigating the death of a grizzly bear just miles outside of Yellowstone National Park. Q2's David Jay tells us why some fear this could be a poaching case. A wildlife photographer in Wyoming came across a bear that had been killed. Pictures have been posted on social media, and it's not clear exactly what happened, but it's brought up responses from those who work closely with animals. Photographer Amy Gerber was driving along the North Fork Highway between Cody and Yellowstone National Park when she spotted something that made her hit her brakes. A grizzly bear lying dead just a short distance off the road surrounded by game wardens. The game and fish guys looking around an area, I'd heard that a bear had been hit by a car. So I stopped and when I spoke with them, the, uh, the bear had not been hit by a car. Um, they confirmed to me that the bear had been shot. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department won't confirm the bear was shot, but confirm it and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service are investigating. One photograph, it appeared that maybe the right paw was missing, but he said no, it was just folded under. Gerber has been a biologist and a natural wildlife photographer for more than 30 years, and even knows some bears in and around Yellowstone by number or name. I think I saw this bear a couple of days ago. It looks like the same bear, and I saw it in the willows along the river. Anytime that we see an animal that dies of suspicious causes, especially gunshots, your mind immediately goes there. And it's it's a, it's a sad day when, when things like that happen to our wildlife. Jeff Ewelt, Zoo Montana Executive Director, says poaching cases do not happen often, but when they do, it's a big concern, especially when it involves a federally protected animal under the Endangered Species Act. It's devastating for us in the animal world to see something like this, to see a beautiful animal like that wasting away for no reason. It's currently estimated there are fewer than 1,800 grizzly bears living in the lower 48. Another reason Gerber says crimes like this are just so heartbreaking. We live in this amazing place. We live in this last stronghold for something like a grizzly bear in the lower 48 states. And I mean, I don't take that for granted one single day. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Thank you, David. We'll continue following this. And right now, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is conducting a 12-month review that could end with grizzly bears in the Northern Continental Divide ecosystem being removed from the federal endangered species list. Montana Senator Steve Daines is calling on Interior Secretary Deb Holland to promise the review is completed within that year time frame and delist the animal if the population is indeed recovered. Have the grizzly bears, have they exceeded the target? in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem and populations? Sen Senator, yes, as I mentioned, the grizzly bears are recovering in some areas, in other areas they're not. That requires us to look at the grizzly bear population as I a whole. I understand, I just, but you're, you're not answering my question. The specific question is the greater Yellowstone ecosystem, and you said they have recovered. Will you support legislation to codify Fish and Wildlife Service are delisting to prevent this legal uncertainty. The Endangered Species Act has been a, a lifesaver for many species. We'll continue to follow the science and the law with respect to grizzly bears. Can you work commit very to the 12 month timelines, Melinda? We commit to working together to get that done in 12 months. I, I know they work very hard to meet their. So that's not an answer. Will you commit to the 12 month timeline that's been laid out by statute? Senator, they. We work very hard to meet our time. That's not an answer, Secretary Holland. I'm saying, would you commit to that? It's just to, to work together to meet the 12 month statutory timeline. Thank you. We'll do our best, Senator. That's not an answer, but thank you. Many Montanans believe grizzlies should remain on the endangered list. Jeff Ewalt with Zoo Montana told Q2 back in February he believes more work needs to be done. He says if population numbers aren't padded, opening the species up to hunting has the potential to decimate the population yet again.